Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth. Thank you so much for stopping by. I am deciding to participate this year in One Book July. First of all, can I just say, am I the only one freaked out that we are already in July? Where does the time go? Anyway, if you're not sure what One Book July is all about, please do a search on YouTube. Um, it's been going on, I think, for six years, and it has three or four organizers who do it. And essentially what it is, is the journaling slash planner community tends to be... Um, uh, polygamous. Let's use that word. We tend to use multiple books so for various reasons. And so one of the challenges that this particular um, challenge does is to try and get people to see, can you consolidate all of that into one book? So I've been following along for the past several years and I decided to try it this year. Now, I am different in that I don't do any planning per se in my journals. Um, I've I've had a couple of questions on this uh, because I've talked about this before, but I can, let me just briefly go over it. All of my calendar stuff is in Google. All of my task stuff and projects and task lists connected to projects, I use Todoist, which is a free app. I use the free app version and it works perfectly fine for me. And all of what would normally be called collections, I'm using in Evernote. And I've been doing that now for, you know, years. So I find that when I'm traveling or out, and I'm out and about, my everyday carry tends to be really, really small. I don't need all of that stuff in paper. It all exists electronically. It's on my phone. It's accessible from my phone or any device I happen to have on me. So it just makes the weight I'm carrying around much slighter. If you have any further questions on that or want more information, please let me know and I will go into more depth. So what I'm doing, well, you can see here, are essentially the, the journals that I've been using this year to date. I'll do a video on this and go more in depth if you're interested, but um, I was using a bullet slash logbook and there's a video about this on my channel and I'll put a link down below to it. One of the things I decided to do is actually not use this anymore. So that's basically gone to the side. And these are the journals that I'm currently using. The problem for me, the challenge for me with One Book July is I have created routines that work really well. And that is what I would recommend as well for anyone out there who have created routines. Do not mess with them, right? It takes a long time to create good habits. And the last thing you want to do is get onto some bandwagon and find, whoops, now I've lost that particular habit that I found useful. And in, for me specifically, I do morning pages every single day. It's three pages. Um, handwritten notes, there's no decorations, it's a brain dump, it gets stuff out of my head into this cheap composition book. I think these are about 89 cents. I use this one every single day, so that's not going to change in July. It is something I'll be using every single day in July, and I've been doing it now for decades, okay? The other thing that is not going to change is one of the things I do when I am walking, and I tend to do a lot of walking, is I listen to podcasts and audiobooks and, you know, whatever. So I often find that my everyday carry is not always with me. So if I'm not exercising, that tends to be with me. If I am going for a walk, I'm kind of keeping things light, and I like having a little book and a pen that I can take notes in. So this one is going to stay. The other thing that is going to stay is this Traveler's Notebook. There's, they are videos to this series that I'm doing this year. It's basically using colored cardstock and I'm using just pen and ink in a case. And all my supplies fit in this pen case. And you can see a video to that as well on my channel, what, the, what pens I'm currently using this year. So that's, that's also going to stay. So here are the three journals that nothing changes in July. So what is One Big Book July for me? One Book July for me has to do with this journal. This is what's different for me. So I tend to normally use this Traveler's Notebook. It's from the Traveler's uh, Factory. It's the one from the Tokyo Station. I use this. This is the one I've been using this year that's different than I've done in the past. And this is the one that I'm focusing on for One Book July. So if you look in this journal, let me just move some of this out of the way. It's basically got one string and a couple of inserts piggybacked underneath it. If you're not sure what the Traveler's Notebook set up, please do a quick search on YouTube. And um, there's 
hundreds and thousands of videos on that. So I have a DIY folder that I keep. It just uses, um, I think it was a manila folder, and it just gives me a place to keep stuff if I need it. I have a bullet journal. So the specific um, challenge with One Book July this year is to actually use the bullet journaling technique. Now, it's something that I have been doing. Uh, my planner system tends to be the Franklin Covey system. I have used that, you know, for decades. And specifically, uh, Stephen Covey's The Successful um, Habit, The Seven Habits of Successful People, something along those lines. That's essentially my Bible when it comes to planning and has worked, like I said, for decades. So I'm not planning on changing that. The one thing I did add in the last several years is this bullet journal idea. And essentially what that is, and there's, again, videos online. Um, if you go to Ryder Carroll's webpage, you can see very quickly what he's doing. He's essentially taking things out of your head and making you put them down so you don't lose them. And it also clears up headspace. So what I'm doing with my bullet journal is actually um, a little bit different because all I'm doing is just getting things out of my head as they come up. Okay, so the tasks in here, if I don't migrate them, if I don't put them directly into my to-do list, I will remember that there's a task here at the end of the day and I'll put it into Todoist, which is my app that manages all my tasks and projects, right? If there's, um, so for example, I have, you can see there's some action items here, right? There's a couple of things I want to go take a look at. At the end of the day, what I look at, or at the end of the week, one or the other, depending on the urgency, I, I flag that, I will move that into either a task, a project, or if it's a collections kind of thing. For example, some books I might be interested in reading this summer or this fall, I'll move that into my collections folders that are set up in Evernote. Okay, so my bullet journal is essentially just a way for me to get something out of my head really quickly. If my phone isn't with me, I just make quick notes. It's sketchy. The, the paper in here is just you know, paper I happen to have in my stash, it's not even sewn into this cover. So when I'm done with this stash, I basically will just chuck it. Here's a pencil board that I made that just helps keep things, you know, handy. So anyway, that's the bullet journal piece of my setup, my One Book July setup, right? So the One Book July works really well in a traveler's notebook because you can have multiple books in it trick for all of those of you who are new to the Traveler's Notebook system. So that's my Bujo. This is really what's different for me this year. I took the pieces that I loved from my bullet slash logbook. And like I said, there's a video down that will, I will link down below that talks about how this format I found worked really well for me and it essentially is the Hobonichi Weeks and the Traveler's Notebook Weeks. And so that's a Traveler's Factory Weeks. And so that's what I did. I went ahead and purchased, I know, I, I heard that gasp. I tend to make my own stuff. So that's just, you know, interesting in itself for me. But I basically got sick and tired of drawing all those lines, right? And I think that you can get two, because uh, these Traveler's Notebook Weeks, come in six month increments. And I think it's 13 US dollars for each one. I believe I got mine from jet pens. So I've gone ahead and just done some decoration on the cover. Essentially, this runs July to December. I have various things in here. Now, what I'm doing with this one book July, right? I am not planning in here. If you're interested, there's a whole conversation about planning versus recording. As I said, I've done all my planning all online. I don't do any of it on paper unless I'm scratching out some ideas or scribbling out some ideas or doing some brainstorming. All of it happens to get accumulated anyway, no matter how I do it electronically. So what I'm using this particular insert for, and this is basically what the layout is, you got the days of the week and you put per week, like one week, and then, you know, a grid blank sheet of paper. You can do whatever you want with it. So what I'm doing 
as I've mentioned in this bullet journal logbook, I'm using this particular insert as essentially a logbook slash memory keeper. So I'm keeping track of it's something I started in this bullet journal. So again, I'm a big proponent for try things out in an inexpensive manner to see if it works for you before you make an investment in something. I did this for one and a half years. So I stopped basically in the, at the end of last week in June and I found that I really liked it. So what that essentially means is at the end of each day or the next morning, essentially, I write down really briefly something about that day that was either significant, happy, sad, made me angry, a beautiful moment, made me laugh, whatever. However, I decide to capture that, right? So that happens at the end of each day, uh, the, the next morning for the day before. And then on the right-hand side, what I'm doing is keeping track of things that I read, I listen to, I watch. That's essentially it. Now, I'm going to be adding photos. Photos for me always come at the very end, but I'm thinking that one of the things that would be fun to do is actually add photos that kind of capture a week. So I will do a flip of this journal at the end of July so you can see what that would look like for me, right? So this is essentially the different part for me this year. The back of the, or the, the back of this string right here has got one of those plastic folders that has got a pocket with stamps, some ephemera, some washi tape, uh, some sticky notes, nothing different here. And then this is the other DIY insert that I have here. It's along the same lines as my Bujo. I was going to create, what I was going to do was make this a bullet journal and make this my notes slash collections. But again, I don't want to create redundancy. I don't need to have an appointment multiple places. I don't need to have notes in multiple places, tasks in multiple places. For me, it works best to have everything in one place and that place for me is electronically when it comes to those kinds of things. So instead of this being collections, which is what I started with was kind of a collections area, which if you remember, if you've been a member, a follower of my YouTube channel for a while, is why I did this in the first place is I, a lot of my collections were getting archived in these morning pages journals and I couldn't find them or it was harder to find them when I wanted to find them. And when I moved to Evernote, that just became simple. So I haven't gotten done anything in this one yet. It's just basic cheap drawing paper. And my plan with this one is to take notes or record something as I'm watching or reading. Again, this is not necessarily a permanent, um, an important, uh, so what I'm looking for, notebook. It's essentially a work in progress place for me to put stuff down as I'm watching, listening, thinking about something. And then it will probably get transferred somewhere else, right? So anyway, so this is essentially what my One Book July looks like. It's got a Bujo section that I basically, because that's really the, the target for this year, a challenge and I basically just keep track of things that need to go somewhere electronically and I don't happen to have done that already. It's got this record keeping uh, weeks and it's got a notebook for me to take notes and then a couple of washi tape samples and things like that. That's essentially what's going to be different for me for One Book July. This travels with me everywhere. Don't get me wrong basically every day, and that's really essentially every day, I touch at least this Morning Pages book and this one. More often than not, these two as well, right? But this essentially is my One Book July plan, is this Traveler's Notebook. Like I said, don't mess with the stuff that works. This is what's going to be different for me in July, and actually starting in July. I fully expect that this is essentially how I'm going to close the year out as well. So that's what I have for you so far. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If you're playing along with One Book July, please drop a link so I can take a look and see how you are setting up and what your plans are. Good luck with the One Book July. Happy summer if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. Happy, I guess, 
winter if you're in the southern. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks. Bye.